Hi everyone, welcome to this new edition of Time for Wastewater. Hi Bjorn, how are you today? Hi Antoine, I'm very fine. I'm happy to see you again. Well, you're happy to, to lose again. I'm sorry, I have to be offensive from the beginning, right? I'm not, I'm not France, I'm not France, right? Yeah, but you're Germany, and I think yeah. neither you nor me can brag about. Well, but, but, the, the, but but give me give me give me one idea. What happened to the penalty shooting with Switzerland with France? Yeah, you know, I'm, <laughs> I've always worked in Switzerland, so I, I I cannot manage to to be sad for the Swiss team. You know. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, that, but, France, but France was a champion championship. Uh, you know won the championship last time, right? And now they lost against it. I, I think we should talk about the topic today. Yeah, I think. So <laughs> our topic today is uh, ZLD. So what's this mysterious acronym, Bjorn? Can you just uh, enlighten me? ZLD stands for? Ah, zero liquid discharge, I think, right? All right, that's it. That, that's it. I always forget it, you know. Um, no, we're mm. just uh, using this this usual minute for, for everybody to step in. Um, We'll have a special guest today, actually, because, you know, we experienced that we are by, by episode five now and we've seen in the four first episode that sometimes things get a bit more uh, advanced with like high level questions. And we thought it might be good for those cases to have just a tad more of, of, of knowledge on, on that very stage. And that is why we have the pleasure today to have a special third guy on, on that stage. He's... Um, an innovation and business development engineer at uh, Lentec Water. He's the author of a uh, quite thorough booklet on, on ZLD uh, in general. And um, he has a concept which he calls smart liquid discharge. And uh, that is actually Christus Charizidis. So, hi, Christus. Welcome to the stage. Hello. Hello, Welcome and Christos. hello to all your viewers. Hello, Bjorn. How are you? Very fine. Good to have you on board. Always good to see you both. So we already have some of our regular uh, people in the chat. We, I, I see uh, Sheldon, I see... Uh, so hi, hi to all of them, uh, hi to all of you, actually. Um, I think we have gone over this little initial, initial period where we, we, we welcome everyone. Let's go straight into the matter. And I think that's the point in time where I have to, to pass the torch over to you, Bjorn. You're going to be our anchorman today, you're going to be starting and opening up. So the mic is all yours. I'll listen to the crap you say, and then I'll tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> Very cool. All right, guys. Yeah, welcome from my end as well. Uh, welcome to the show today. And the topic today, it is, yeah, I mean, we already talked about that. It's that ID. So it is zero liquid discharge. And we want to explore the question, is it still hot or meanwhile crap or maybe the other way around. But what exactly does ZLD mean? I mean, let's take, let's take a little bit the bird's eye view of the technology, or is it rather a collection of different technologies? We will clarify this with our expert Christos in a minute. ZLD means zero liquid discharge. We already clarified that, but in other words, a completely wastewater free production. That's the definition, right? But is this really true? Is there really nothing left over? What about the sword? What about the flue gas? Does that really count as zero? I mean, or is the definition simply, I call it a marketing gimmick, right? Like politicians, many companies promise how sustainable they are and how many of the sustainable development goals they meet. Let's not look deeper into this promises. We will save this for another episode, I think we should do. And never mind. One thing is clear in any case. Zero liquid discharge is the solution. And it's gaining popularity driven by many considerations, including the three major factors. Compliance with strict legal standards, the rising cost of fresh water, and the desire to manage declining water supplies responsibility. But let's be honest now at least before Antoine enters stage. Back in the 70s and 80s, huge evaporation ponds were used to let the cooling water of large industrial plants evaporate naturally and to minimize disposal costs. And the whole concept of ZLD 
is not really new. Technically, it has long been possible to realize wastewater free production. Mostly it fails because of the financing or the technical understanding that is needed to combine all these individual disciplines, right? And yes, the process is very energy intensive. ZLD technology is still hot or just crap, but I'm sure Antoine does have an op opinion too. And most probably not mine again. Let's find out. So let's go. So I'll swiftly take the microphone to answer you, Bjorn, here. And I think you all get uh, that Bjorn is going to be in favor of ZLD today. And <laughs> most of what I'll explain to you today is that, yeah, when we speak about ZLD, actually, we are really speaking of something which is at the very, 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 very advanced stage. I mean, we are really, it's, it's a last solution resource. And he's presenting that and painting that as usual as something you should be doing every day. So my point is going to be, before you look into that very, very, very advanced treatment, there are many other stuff you can do in between and many intermediate steps. But you know what? We're not going to start debating right off. We're going to leave the stage for a second to, um, or for more than a second, actually. The next five minutes are yours, Christus, or however, how long you, you need. Um, so Christus is going to introduce us a bit more into this concept of zero liquid discharge and everything it takes and everything you should take into consideration. So Christus, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Antoine Mjorn, for giving me the opportunity to explain to your viewers a little bit more about uh, brine treatment. For this reason, I have prepared a small presentation for, for you. So, uh, as uh, Antoine uh, said, I am an innovation and business development engineer in uh, Lentec uh, with a main focus on uh, brine treatment, which is the consequential process in zero liquid discharge. But first, we, we need to understand what is brine exactly. What, what are we? What is the effluent stream that we are treating? And it has to do mostly with high TDS effluent streams that I would characterize are have a higher TDS of 60,000 milligrams per liter. Now, the thing is that uh, these uh, processes have uh, a problem being treated by normal membrane processes like uh, reverse osmosis due to their high osmotic pressure. Uh, but uh, due to a certain number of factors, such as environmental legislation, increased discharge fees, restricted groundwater withdrawal, and local drought problems, the market has been growing steadily in the last years, with uh, the main number of uh, projects uh, being anything between 10 to 100 kilometers per day. So uh, the problem here is a little bit more... Um, uh, let's say, uh, complicated. Why? Because every brine stream has a wide variety of uh, different characteristics, ranging from ion balance to BOD, COD, heavy metals, etc. And uh, for this reason, uh, the first step that the industry had decided, or the first uh, measure that the industry had decided to do with the said brines was to simply get rid of them. And uh, this was done either through public network or, in the worst case, uh, truck transport to, uh, to straight to the sea or to local uh, wastewater treatment plants. Bjorn uh, mentioned um, the thermal systems that have been used in the last decades to take care of, uh, of brines and uh, to produce uh, salts, giving us also the ability to reuse the recovered water. In the last, let's say, 10 plus years, uh, the water industry has been investing more and more into brine concentrators. And these are systems that cannot go, per se, directly to crystallization, like uh, the thermal units do, but they can alleviate the thermal system uh, by reducing the brine 
volume and thus reducing also the size and the energy consumed in this in the last crystallization step chris so, sorry i don't want to cut you off uh, are you showing different slides or a slideshow because we yes see your... because the, you, you can't see it no we see only your your front page uh -huh. what you, what you explain is very interesting and the, uh, this is this is like interesting so let me start again if i share it like this i hope now you're seeing the slides are you seeing the presentation we still have the the, the front slide okay no no it's moving no it's moving all good oh uh, okay so let me see let no can you see the slide now yeah that works okay perfect so this is the first slide explaining a little bit more about the brines here as i said uh, larger than 60,000 milligrams per liter uh, different factors pressing for treating the brines and the high variability of characteristics not uh, being able to treat the brine with the normal uh, membrane processes so this is a diagram of um, let's say the usual ways to treat brine say as i said the typical way was to get rid of it now we're using brine concentrators and thermal systems in order to reuse the water and possibly recover salts if we go a little bit deeper into the details uh, of uh, the available uh, options that we have to treat the brine uh, we can go into a simplified diagram such as this and um, the yellow uh, tabs are the conventional um, ways to treat the brine you have the red tab which is the thermal evaporation and the blue tab which is the brine concentrator so let, let's take let's take a look into the conventional ways to let's say treat or get rid of the brine which was as we said the seed discharge evaporation ponds which was also mentioned by antoine wastewater treatment plants deep wells and land application but due to let's say the high amount of industry water yeah all over the world we had to find also a more industrial solution this is uh, in the last uh, decades where thermal evaporation comes in and uh, for the viewers that uh, don't have an idea about thermal evaporation uh, you can imagine them essentially as uh, big pots and uh, in order to let's say dry out the salts from a pot it requires a lot of energy like if you try it at home like uh, dry completely salty water you can find by yourself how much time and energy this thing requires and uh, this is why we're using as i mentioned in the last uh, years so we're trying to invest more and more on brine concentrators so technologies that don't go to crystallization per se uh, but rather minimize the volume of the brine and uh, some of these brine concentrators can be categorized into or the major uh, brine concentrators can, can be categorized into four uh, different aspects and these are the pressure driven that uh, consists of ultra high pressure reverse osmosis and stage assisted nanofiltration the electricity driven with electrodialysis and bipolar electrodialysis the chemically driven with forward osmosis and liquid to liquid water extraction and the thermally driven which consists of membrane distillation now the problem is that there is no one solution available for everything and why is that because every case has its own characteristics it may have very high salinity very high, very high fouling potential, very high scaling potential, or very high temperature, or, or you're asked to do specific separation, or you even have reduced site area. So according to the checks that you do, then you have to go back here and choose the best possible scenario to treat your uh, effluent stream. Now, the good news is that um, 
if you go to zero liquid discharge, which is a very expensive process, you also have the option of recovering different amounts of salts. And what we're looking at is a year's demand in salts worldwide, which will only keep increasing year by year. So we'll need more salts. And uh, the way to do it is also recovering the salts that we are essentially throwing away uh, to back to the sea or to wastewater treatment plants. So, Antoine, I think my presentation is over. Thanks, Antoine. If, and um, I will be happy to answer to any of your or your viewers' questions later on during this podcast. I'm pretty sure we will have to take you on on stage to to uh, to check if we are not telling too much crap. You know, Bjorn, he's always the one <laughs> telling some crap. So, just to, to, to take the, the, the main points that I take out of the presentation, I, I hear that ZLD is very expensive um, and that uh, you have to really look at the full context and you don't do that just because you want to do that. So it sounds to me like exactly what I was saying right before. So I think we can conclude and say, hey, see you next month. Uh, I won and Bjorn lost. Right, Bjorn? <laughs> You're always trying this, uh, and you, oh, you never, works. yeah, and then never ever. Anyway, be, before going into the discussion, I have I have one one special. We, we have another special guest here here today, uh, which is yeah yeah. Come on, we have Harris Kadris Pahik from Ligtek Denmark on, on in this show. Well, one of our few is, and he has a special day. It's his birthday. Believe it or not, he no. is spending oh, his birthday congrats. into our show. Great, happy birthday. Harris, and looking forward to talking to you soon. Enjoy the show. But now, let's say, let's let's come back to the topic a little bit and let's talk about ZLD. One thing first, I would like to, I would like really to mention. Um, I'm I'm working with a Google Alert, right? So that means you can use Google Alert, and you're getting from from Google if you put some keywords in, you're getting the news in here, right? So. And I'm using this for ZLD. So if something is new in the internet about ZLD, um, then I'm getting an email. So that's very, very interesting because I'm getting every day an email from Google about ZLD, something new came up. And what is it about? This is all about a new market study. So all I want to say today, guys, here is if you just look on the cover page from all the market studies, you will realize that these studies most of them are fully bullshit. And I want to make aware that you are aware about this because they are company displayed, which may somehow in the field of ZLD, but they are never, a, let's say, a contractor or an integrator for a ZLD plan, right? And I will give you an example. Quite often I see Torre. Torre is a great company. They have great membranes and they are part of the ZLD game, but they are not an integrator. They are not the company who has taken an anti-ZLD plant and put it somewhere to a power plant. I just want to sense, uh, sen sensitive, uh, sense, I, I want to make sure guys that, you know, that take care of what you, what you get in the internet about ZLD. So that was my, one of, one of my things I wanted to let you know. Okay. You, you had that on your chest. You had to get rid of it. Uh, we, we get yeah, it. Um, yeah. I'd like, to bring that conversation to a, a simple, let's say, I, I know it's an, a simplification, but I'd like you to, to try to understand what we are talking about here. So here's what I prepared. I, I prepared a, a graph, and you're going to tell me if that's the right way to look at it. I'm not even talking of cost yet. We're going to come to the cost later on. But first, to summarize what Chris has said, we have this, this first step where we say we have raw wastewater. That raw wastewater gets treated in a wastewater treatment plant, and then you could already go out and say, hey, let's truck that away, not my problem, someone else's problem. Or you say, no, wait, I go to a membrane treatment, and that's probably why a company like Torre appears there, because maybe their membranes are used there. It's not really ZLD, but it is the first yeah. treatment of a ZLD. So you go through a membrane, and then at the outlet of that membrane, you have this brine, and that's everything that Chris has just explained us. This brine goes into all these brine treatments, but we have, I, I, I just narrow it down to two, three options whether you continue into your ZLD direction or you say, no, wait, I put everything in an evaporation pond. That's what you, you said, Bjorn, was the solution in the 80s and 90s. Or again, you truck it away. 
Still agree with that? Uh, yes, a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so let's admit that you continue your route on the ZLD route. So you had this first first step of preparation, concentration, however you call it, if it's an evaporator, if it's a pretreatment, and then you have a bit less water and a more a bit more something else. And again, you can drive it to a crystallizer and continue your ZLD route, or go to a pond or truck it away. And finally, there's this last step of the ZLD where, well, you have a zero liquid discharge. You take out solids and that's what I really love with your presentation, Christus, with this uh, second last slide, which tells you maybe in the future, that is a point where you start having positive costs because you take out very valuable souls, very valuable heavy metals, very valuable matter that you can reuse fully with you. Really love the idea. But if that's what we are talking about, when we speak of ZLD or not ZLD, you get it, it's not black or white, right? So you, you would go to ZLD if all the other options were off the table. Is that already something where we can agree on, Bjorn, or would you go to ZLD anyways? Well, uh, I would not say anyway, but uh, let's say if I have the option between, let's say if I have one of the drivers, I think we have the three or four major drivers, which are the the, the limits by the authorities. We have uh, maybe the idea that we can recover some elements. We have also the the driver that we have to recycle the wastewater to save some cost, or that we are not able to discharge somehow the wastewater. So these are somehow the drivers. And let's say if it comes to the point that one of these, let's say, drivers are forcing you to implement something, I think you should especially consider ZLD more than MLD. That is that is the point here today, right? And even that, even I, that, I might discuss it. You know, I, I'm just yes, asking questions. I'm not not like it's not like I have a strong opinion, and I would say you you're fully wrong. I'm just raising some questions. You know, if you're an industrial operator, what is your visibility today? How long do you? Do you plan your plant in the future? Is it five years? Is it 10 years? Is it 20 years? Is it a century? The reason why that matters is that if, if you're planning on 10 years, I tell you already an industrial who has a clear vision of the future. It's not that often that you, you can plan that long. So when you're an industrial, if there's something you want to avoid is a, a CapEx project where you don't have a clear vision of what's coming. Whereas trucking away might not be the most elegant solution. I get it. You don't want to have trucks of water on your roads day in, day out. Hmm. But hmm. trucking away is something with zero money down and which is going to work almost all the time. But we are always, we are, we are environmental engineers, right? I mean, to truck it away means you do something else with it, right? What was it? What is it? I mean, is that really the case that we that we are producing something and then we are saying, ah, I can't take her. I truck it away. Uh, someone else decision problem. He has to solve it. I well, mean, I mean, there's an economic effect and there's also an you know an effect from the environment, right? And this should needs to be considered in this discussion right just to truck it away i mean it's too easy for me a little bit right because i mean you are coming i mean you have just one argument why you are truck away is because okay it's cheaper right that, yes, that's no. your argument have you have you have you any other argument yeah i, I can cite you a, a guy that you may know he's called bjorn otto and i had a discussion <laughs> with him two, two months ago uh, about centralized versus decentralized oh. and he was arguing yeah. that we should all all do everything centralized because that way we're much more efficient. We can treat with much more efficiency and, and, and with much more accuracy. So, all right, all right. But that, even then, we would have an ZID plant somewhere centralized, <laughs> right? So, I mean, that's, that's the same principle. Then you put it somewhere else. I mean, yes. I, 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 I don't get really, that okay. don't get really your, your, your argument, right? Then, it's a matter of definition. I mean, ZLD usually is because you take all that water out and, and you put it back in front of your process. If you go to a central plant, it's not going to be ZLD in the sense that you are treating all the matter out only to release pure water to the environment. But I, I get your point that to a certain mm. extent, you might be using similar technologies. Okay. What I'm saying is that from an industrial point of view, 
even though you're right, we should be looking at, uh, at systems and zooming out and saying as a society, what do we want to do with our water? But in the real world, unfortunately, and I, I, I really give you that point, unfortunately, it's not how it works. If you're an industrial player, well, what would push you to, to do a ZLD? First, there is no water available. If you have no water at the inlet, you have to find your water from somewhere. So if you find your water from somewhere, that's most probably going to be from your MLD or ZLD plant, right? Mm -hmm. Second option is really you're in the middle of nowhere. And if you're in the middle of nowhere, trucking is going to be so crazy expensive that you don't do that. And if you're in the middle of nowhere, plus in that middle of nowhere, there's the land is very expensive, then you cannot put an evaporation pond. Then I might debate in which universe is it possible to be at the same time in the middle of nowhere and 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 don't have the space to do an evaporation pond but but that's a different story but just to put stuff in context i'd like you to say that that sentence Bjorn, you agree with me that zld is something you do when you have no choice that idea is something you are doing if one of the drivers is forcing you but then you should consider at least that you don't go for an MLD. so i would like to go this way Right. I mean, where are you using ZLD? Where are you using ZLD mostly? Right. I mean, think about the countries where you find the most ZLD plants, which is the US. Right. About all the coal fire plants. You will find many, many, many of them in China and Russia about the same. And you will find them in India because they have all the environmental issues. Right. So they want to make sure that their wastewater is not going into the rivers and is polluting the environment anymore so these are the drivers and think a little bit about about the coal fire plants about the power plants right in general i mean think about china think about russia how many power plants coal plants are coming up i saw a map right here in here in, here in europe in, in tiny europe let's say we are we are shutting down all all coal fire plants but they're in asia you see so many and they're coming more and more and more and more and we have to find a solution to make sure that we don't pollute the environment. So that's my point, and that's why we should consider the ZLD. I'm not sure I get your point between the coal fire plant and, and the ZLD. Um, <laughs> it's true that power plants are a, 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 nice, a nice use case because you have water which, and you're going to correct me, Christus, which are not so highly polluted so having a ZLD means that you don't go to, to the ex most extreme treatments. And on the other end, power plants are something where you... you I mean, where, but, but they are placed somewhere in the middle of where? Nowhere, right? Think about China. Think about Russia. They're, that's the issue, and they don't have any access to water. That's why they have to recycle that. And that's that's why... A problem. It's many, a many, problem. Many, yeah, no, 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 but that, that's... Enough. that's Okay, that's come, why <laughs> that that's why many many of the power plants have a ZLD issue, or let's say, are capable for ZLD. Especially if you take about Russia, China, US, right? These are the drivers, and that's why it is not really the case for for Europe. Okay, you know what? Let, let's do a simple exercise. Uh, I think that's what Parag is is, is uh, suggesting in the chat. So so let's let's do it. Let, let's do the simple exercise. Just. I mean, I know the limitation of the exercise, so, but, but just try to, let's try to fulfill the table. Let's say um, we are doing that ZLD plant, which I was just showing just before. So let's, let's fill that and let's say how much does every step cost, okay? So okay. here you, I would you, say, you, you, can, you can try, you can try. Yeah, that's going to be my, my, my rough thing. I would say if you take yeah. a membrane treatment, and I remember some conversations I had with, with Rabbit, which is in, in the chat today, um, I would say that today we must be around one US dollar per, per cubic meter at the inlet. So one, one US dollar to treat our wastewater flow through a membrane system. If that sounds wrong to someone, just raise your hand. If not, I'm going to go for that. Then on the evaporation step, what I would feel like, and you see a bit my cheat, which I have next to it on the, uh, on the screen, I would say 20 US dollar per cubic meter at the inlet. Is that something that's sounds anywhere close to the truth. If not, Christos, just raise your hand of someone who has um, debt on that, just, just don't hesitate to, to jump in. But I'm just going for that. Let's say, so on the evaporation step, 20 US dollar per cubic. And then you have the pure ZLD step where you go from MLD to ZLD, that's the crystallization. And there I would expect something like 40 US dollar per cubic meter. Okay? Still... No one is doing a herd attack of those numbers, if that's the we case. Are, we are still listening to your, to your mouth. Okay. Then, you know, 
if we have to consider all of that, we have to consider how much water is reaching that point at all, because that, of course, changes uh, our equation. I would say on, on the membrane step alone, um, we are going to make something like 70% recovery, okay? On the evaporation step alone, again, 60, and on the crystallization alone, 80. That's going to be my assumption. Um, Let's take... Oh, Chris, yeah. Chris wants I, to say I, I, something. Antoine, I, I think that uh, perhaps we can put uh, higher uh, recovery for uh, evaporation and uh, lower for crystallization. So the whole, the whole thing is that uh, the higher the concentration of uh, the, the brine, the harder it is to take water out. So I would put around uh, 90%. Uh, recovery on uh, the evaporation and 50% on the crystallization. Yep, that's, that does it. Thank you. Now I'm even more wondering why we should go to ZLD, but but yeah. <laughs> thank, th thanks, Christos. Um, Fabian is suggesting that maybe membrane is, is going to be more expensive than $1. I remember, um, and I don't want you to, to steal the, the word of, of Revit, but uh, I remember in our discussion, I think that was in, in the podcast we, we, we recorded together, it was mentioning that some years ago, it was around $2, two per, per cubic meter, but now in some cases, it can go down to point something. So I, I don't know if one is a, is a right middle point, um, but we, we can play with, with that parameter in, in, in the next steps, if you wish. Um, while I'm at the discharge costs, how much would it cost to, to put just my, my, my brine in, in a well, in a deep well, or in a wastewater treatment plant? How much would, would they charge me for for brine, and how much would they charge me for concentrated brine? If I someone... have no clue. Okay, I'm, I'm going to put something like it's what I found in some literature in some places, but it might be wrong. We'll see. Let's take five dollars on the brine, and let's take fifty dollars on the concentrated brine. And then finally, if we have to consider the evaporation option we have to take the land plus the liner cost. And uh, I would say something like one, uh, 0.5 US dollar per, per, per square meter. Sounds like something, you know, I, I was looking at, uh, at Arizona. I was thinking there's a lot of sun. Maybe they, they do some evaporation there. So maybe that, that's, a, that's a figure. So I'm sorry, it's an Excel table, but at some point we have to be a bit uh, concrete with numbers. Um, last element, if we have to bring that water up front, how much would we pay to have industrial water treated to uh, to the level of purity that you take out of a ZLD? Something like two US dollar per cubic meter? Does, does that sound realistic to you? Okay, let's, sounds, go. Yeah. let's, let's go for that. Um, and finally, how big is our plant? Tell me, we pick a number and then, yeah. How many wastewater do we have at the, at the inlet of our plant? Christos, you said 10 to 100 is, is the typical size of what you've been doing, right? L l let's say 100 kilometers per day. Let's take the max. Oh, it's a small one, eh? Let's go for that. So now if I zoom out and I go to my big picture, and I, I didn't do that exercise before, so I don't know what we're going to find. Let's, let's check that. What do we get? So cheapest option is to truck away quite close to ZLD. So ZLD oh. and trucking away seem to be quite close one from the other. So you see, it's not such a simple equation. And if I move a bit the needle, if I say my concentrated brine instead of five, a fifteen is a fifty is fifteen, then trucking away at MLD is going to be a better option. But you see, we have a close call between trucking the brine, trucking the concentrated brine, or going to ZLD. All right. Okay, are you are you are you are you good with your with your table, Antoine? I am. I just want to interrupt you. Okay, I think this is just the half of the truth, right? Okay. I mean, for sure, we can we can discuss the numbers whether it's one 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 dollar per cubic meter for membranes or five or whatever, right? But I think we have to consider a lot of other things as well, and especially Christos mentioned this during his presentation. Maybe you didn't listen. Um, because the recovery of elements is, let's say, is a crucial, is a crucial 
point to use that LD. So all I want to say is um, we all know that that LD is very expensive in terms of KPEX as well OPEX, right? And you are fully right, right? Um, most of the stuff is for energy, but also for some equipment. Uh, these are the two drivers. But a ZLD plant can also, you know, can earn some money. And that is now the point I want to tell, um, that a ZLD plant can, can be amortized after 10 years. So, and I want to give you an example, because I'm pretty sure that you don't believe that, right? I want to give an example. Um, which which I found um, is somehow, yeah, wait, 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 maybe I'm too stupid for this here. Do you see my screen? Not, yeah, yeah, you did it, right? Um, <laughs> You're oh, a mean oh, guy. Oh, so, so, sorry, 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 guys, this was, this was wrong. This was somehow the penalty, the final penalty France missed in the, the game. But I no, wanted to talk no, I, about something no, else. You're no, so no, no, wait. I see it. I see what you're bringing up. It's not like I don't know what the, the stupid <laughs> no, no, joke no. you're preparing. And I still put you on screen. So thank <laughs> me now. <laughs> <laughs> no, Let, let's back to the topic. This was, this was just, just uh, um, a small joke here between and front of myself. No, what I want to say is um, you see the screen, right? You see... Um, what I have published about the, that is, um, there's a so, ZLD well, plant from well, Zeus. Just, and just, I before you, just before you start, Piran, because uh, that's also a question we had in, in the chat, and I think your document is answering to that. What are we talking about here in terms of wastewater? It's a desalination plant, right? Correct. Is it seawater or is it brackish water? Um, I think it's a coal mine somehow. I was coming from a coal mine, so I think okay. it's... it's something in between. But I think the, the point is not really whether it is at the moment brackish water or something else. It is a little bit the math uh, they did. Um, this is a case study from Dewis, uh, from Poland, uh, two coal mines and Zewis built as a ZLD plant, which is pretty, pretty cool. And this was around 1.4 million cubics a day. So it's it's, I would say, not a small one, right? So, and I don't want to go into the technology they used, right? This is not really the point. They did pre-treatment, reverse osmosis, prime concentration, and, and so on and so on. I want to have a look into the economics. Because, I mean, what you said is fully right. Yeah, we have all the costs. Maybe trucking is, is cheaper than, you know, to using MLD or ZLD or whatever. But the entire plan was about 60 million, which is a lot of money, right? But, and here it comes now, um, this plant is able to produce material they can sell on the market. For instance, they are selling distilled water, drinking water, salt tablets, back and bulk salt, and also some other quality salt, some iodine, some bromine, I think Chris has already mentioned, some carnalite, some magnesium, and they get it. Uh, I mean, they can get around 8 million a year out of this. So think about the, the capex of 60. You have to consider this as well, right? That you can create money with a ZLD plant. And this is a huge benefit. Everybody's always talking about, all right, it's a lot of money and maybe trucking is cheaper, something like this. But you can sell resources you win through a ZLD technology. And that's the point you should consider, especially if it comes to the point, is it MLD or ZLD, right? With ZLD, you can create money. I'm not saying it's a money machine, but it is at least something. While over some years, you can amortize your ZLD plant. What do you think of that? Um, the, the, this comment from, from Revit. Solid disposal also costs some money, which should be added to the ZLD overall cost. Because you're right, you're fully right. Some of what you extract might be valuable, but not everything. Yep. And, and what is not valuable is going to cost you as well. And to really look at the two side of that, we can take Fabian's comment, which is saying that, by the way, um, if your water has 
these problematic substances in. Probably if you truck it away, it's going to be so expensive that you have to go to ZLD. So really, it boils down to what's in your water. That's why your example, uh, your context is important. When you say desalination, at least we, we know what we're talking about. If it's a mine, I mean, we expect heavy metals, right? I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't expect. All, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying, that that's the point. I mean, you did the mass and you're saying, yeah, you want to do the comparison. But you can create money. That's, come on, you have to consider that, that you can get some money out of the ZLD plant because, because you can win elements you can sell on the market. This is what exactly Christos showed us in the presentation in the beginning. And I mean, we are environmental engineers. Isn't it about to recycle, to recover things? Isn't this all about? Okay, I'm gonna surprise you, Bjorn. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a bit further, even what okay. you say. Because it's about the cost of recycling or the cost of selling it. But what we are not looking at, and that's why I try to summarize all of that in a table, but but you're all right in the chat. You're all right when you, you explain that, Bjorn. There is a macro we have to look at. If yeah. you are recycling some of that matter, maybe you, you sell it. But I would say that's not even the important part. The important part is that and at another place in the world, you don't have to produce it. What is the cost of that? What is the, the economy of that? Because at this other place in the world, you're not impacting natural resources. You're just working on a circular economy. So I'm going a bit off script because we have to be fighting one against the other but but on that point I'm, I, I don't want you to fight with you I, I fully agree um, I mean if you look at at what's in, in our wastewater we could be just uh, there are some some things some some matters in in the water cycle which are much more um, in much higher quantities than what we use worldwide in a year meaning that if we were closing the loop and recycling the water some of these resources we could just never touch it again and never have to mine it again so so yeah yeah, subscribe to that argument. Fully agree. But that doesn't solve the issue of with which other substances is, is, it, um, is it really coming together. And again, not trying to advertise all the discussion I had with Rabbit, but you know, he was three times a guest on my podcast. So of course, I discussed a lot of the matter with him. And uh, if I recall what he said uh, towards the end of our last discussion, he was saying that resource recovery is promising, but not yet there. Technology speaking, Chrysos, how many how many of the elements we can we can we can really get out? Come on, give us some numbers. How much money you can get with the ZLD plant in terms of the elements in terms of recovery? Now it is time for an expert here. So the thing is that you can't recover everything, right? If you want to recover, okay. sorry, sorry. Like um, the thing is. You are both right and wrong at the same time. And this is how it goes. So you have uh, potential to get, let's say, two to three uh, high quality products out of a brine. But here's the thing. You don't have to do ZLD, a high detailed ZLD at every case. And, and what do I mean by that? And I think the future is doing a few systems of um, let's say high detailed uh, fractional crystallization all over the world that concentrate mixed salts from several industries and the co the relevant costs to do a zero liquid discharge and produce mixed salts are much much lower than to recover of course high purity products and uh, this is the way that we should look at it. Not every case, we don't do a high detailed case and in, in every scenario, but we can work much at much lower costs in a large number of cases and concentrate all the products in, uh, let's say, two to three locations in, uh, in every country. And there you have the way to transform the, the brines from a problem to an opportunity. So if I, if I understand that, that one right, that means MLD on site, then bringing all the remaining concentrated brands together and having a scale effect with a ZLD off site. 
e either an MLD or let's say a low cost zero liquid discharge. It doesn't uh, to produce a mixed salt nowadays. Uh, it's not such uh, a high cost, especially for example with liquid to liquid water extraction. So um, I would say that um, perhaps we have been looking the problem uh, from a wrong perspective for a lot of years now. And I agree that doing case by case, highly cost ZLD is not, is not the solution. But zero liquid discharge has, as I said, has the ability to transform our, um, let's say, uh, commercial potential uh, of, uh, of our projects. And this can be done in a few cases, if this helps, uh, if this helps you out. I have a, a last question maybe for you, Christus. Um, I'd like to look a bit in the future. Uh, you, you know, when I entered the, these costs, they said $20 for, for MLD per, per cubic and $40 for, for ZLD per, per cubic, very, very roughly said. I was wondering, you know, um, 20 years ago or 30 years ago, we would have maybe entered the similar cost for, for instance, reverse osmosis. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it was more and more used a bit everywhere, it drove the cost down also because there was more more actors in, in, into the market and, uh, and mm -hmm. more competition and more R&D. And, and that brought it to a level where today it is, let's say, even commercially acceptable, even if you're not uh, subsidized by, by a government. Um, mm -hmm. Would you say that uh, there is a barrier to break in, in ZLD or is it really fixed cost that we cannot, we just cannot do better? We have already broken the barrier, I'd say. We have already braced it with uh, the brine concentrator technologies. And this is what we have been doing for the last uh, 20 years. We have been trying to invent, to find more and more ways to minimize the brine and bridge the barrier. Um, actually, now we have the potential to minimize the brine volume at a much lower cost than anything we had seen before. And uh, I think these uh, new technologies will only become better at to a point. I don't know if they will ever replace uh, the crystallization unit, but uh, they can damn make it a very, very small cost for your business plan. Okay, um, one, one final question. I mean, then we maybe we get in conclusion about this topic, but Christos, how do you see ZLD in 10, 15, 20 years? Um, I will see. Hmm. I see it as a necessity, because okay. especially with uh, in the industry, because we we can't just uh, draw from the <laughs> drinking water network <laughs> uh, anymore. Like we, we we can't just invest in cleaning the water to drinking water standards only to use it in the industry, and uh, with the local uh, water stress. Uh, the only way to move forward is water reuse. And for yeah. water reuse, you need zero liquid uh, or minimum liquid discharge. Yeah. And I think once one thing which, which helps me to understand the technology and to be familiar with that is if I look into the future and we have actually some, some kind of change in terms of the energy sources we are using. So that means even in future, this technology will be more green. That is what I see. If we are oh, thinking yeah. about alternative energies, how we operate and that are the plant, right? So, and this makes it for me, yeah, this is yeah, but somehow you're, the future or part thing. of the future. I, I would love it to be true what you just said, but think of it. You, you, you said it yourself. ZLD is used a lot in power. So you mean that you would be on a power plant, like coal power plant, and you would, you would not be using the energy produced locally. You would be having some other source of energy just for your ZLD plant. Doesn't sound realistic to me. Yeah, but um, okay, power plant is one thing, but you have other industries as well, especially if you have a look into Asia, right? I mean, yeah, power plants is, is one major driver, but you have also the other industries which are any, I mean, which are polluting all the all the rivers and and oceans and things like this. So there, we have to make sure that we have a solution for that. Is that somehow the conclusion today? Can we agree on that? Let's agree I mean, on that one. Let's yeah, agree. Let's on that agree. One. <laughs> Perfect. Well, 
Um, Christos, thanks a lot for having been with, with us. It, it was good to have someone that uh, understands. And you see, when we have a real expert, we tend to fight a bit less with Bjorn because we know we cannot bullshit. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you the for having me. Preparation was 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 harder, right? The preparation was harder. Okay, what's next, Antoine? I propose you to switch to the last section. I misclicked. It wasn't supposed to be the end. <laughs> but it, it's the last section. Uh, it's uh, actually what's in the news. So what's in the news today? Um, before I let you go to your news, I'm going to have a very short news. Actually, oh, it's right behind me. Um, it's not a directly related to a water topic, but it's a, it's a cool book I've read uh, this month. Um, actually, you know, I had the chance to return a bit to the office uh, two weeks ago. I was there also yesterday, which means I was taking the train again, which I didn't do for, for some months. Taking the train is a good opportunity to read a book, um, which I have a bit less at home, I have to confess, uh, with my daughters uh, playing around. But uh, I had the chance to, to read that book. It's called The Sustainability Puzzle. It's written by Alice Schmidt and Claudia Winkler. Um, I'm going to do a bit of self-advertising as well. I had the chance to discuss with both of them. So they're going to be on the podcast in, in, in some weeks. But, uh, but really, um, the book is a page turner, uh, has a lot of input, especially on what you just mentioned about resource recovery. And uh, I think it features a, a statistic which says that today in the world, 8.9% 8, 8 of the resources are recovered, which gives you a, a sense of the way to go. Talks a lot about the system approach, um, how we in the water industry are part of a bigger something and, uh, and how we can, we can do our part. So I'm not going to make too long because it's not, unfortunately, uh, a, a book show that we have here. But really, if there's one book you have to read on that, I mean, you don't need to know anything. It's, it's 200 pages long. It's not, it's not too long. It's very easy to read. And uh, it has a lot of very, very interesting stuff inside. And, and that's for, for, for my news. What's up in your news, Bjorn? My news? Uh, from the water industry, uh, yeah. what I've realized is that there was a, I'm not sure whether you have seen it, but there was an award for the Water Company of the Year. So every year, the Global Water Intelligence uh, magazine, we all know them, and pretty cool, they are good, right? I don't want to don't <laughs> say anything against them. But they announced that this year, winner of the Water Company of the Year award was going to ski on water. And I was thinking a little bit to myself, all right. I mean, they did it for making the most, that was the explanation, most significant contribution to the development of the international water sector in 2020, especially focusing on its long-term investments in developing new countries. And I was checking a little bit, I mean, I know ski on water, but for the audience, I was, I mean, who's in the portfolio and the major companies who are in ski on, with ski on water are Ovivo, right, is Enviro Water, which is better known than Enviro Chemi. Um, we have Eliquo, which is the um, for the municipal wastewater market, and we have PAC, which is the uh, you know the technology provider for biological uh, uh, plants. And I mean, don't get me wrong, right? These are all great companies, but what I do not understand is a little bit the why. All companies are under one umbrella, under the sky and ski on water umbrella, due to the financial capabilities of the skiing group, headed by Susanne Klatten, right? And it looks a little bit like for me, if you have enough money to acquire a lot of good companies, you just get the award. And so next year, most probably, we will see Veolia on the table again, on the stage. I don't know. One more thing. And if you guys want to avoid that Veolia is, will win the 2021 award, I mean, just apply with your company at the GWI webpage because it is available for everybody, for all of us. So we can go with our companies and we can apply for the award. So maybe you should do this to make sure that not only money counts. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit surprised that you're surprised, honestly. I'm not, really. <laughs> Why? Uh, I'm saying we're not a book show, but let, let me give you a book example. Uh, in France, we have something which is called the, the Goncourt Prize every year. So it's supposed to be the, the best book of the year. And yeah. It must be a coincidence, but every year it goes to one of the three major companies in the books in France. And it's your one company one, your two company two, your three company three, and, and back to one. So what I'm trying to say here is that maybe those companies are good companies, 
And maybe they deserve an award, like the other 30 good companies deserve an award. But at the end of the day, if you apply, you get it. And if you apply plus you take some some advertising in the in the magazine, then you have a better chance to win. And, and, and fair enough. I mean, uh, you know, I can give you an example, even an internal example. I, I won a prize within Suez in my Suez years. Um, I think it was six years ago. I won that prize, an innovation prize. I was so proud of that innovation prize. And uh, and my CEO at the time came to me and instead of saying me uh, congratulations, he said, you, do you know where you get it? I said, yeah, I have an idea, but, but tell me. And he told me, yeah, it's just it was our turn. Um, you take all the internal part of Suez. It was our turn to get it. And I was in the team that had done something within the part that should get it that year. So I got it. And I think that applies to, to so, so, so many awards. So yeah, uh, I think your advice is right. We should all apply to it first because uh, that way you have more people applying to it and then probably gets a bit more noise and and fair don't get it wrong it's not a shot against GWM. no 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 definitely um, not definitely not i mean take the opportunity bring your bring your company to the dwi that at least that let's say there's a brighter portfolio of company they can select and that they just not look for metito or for for veolia zuis whoever right um uh, Maybe some we will find some some surprises next year. Hopefully. Now we are talking of companies, and I, I see that we have four minutes left. So let me use the, those four minutes left because um, you know I I said it's not a book show, so I'm I'm going to talk <laughs> about something I'm reading actually every week, okay. um, which is not the book I just shared. It's a newsletter, and uh, it's a newsletter called uh, um, I mean it's sent by a guy I, I don't know if you know him. He, he's a German guy. It's called Björn Otto, and. Uh, I heard reading that newsletter that this guy called Bjorn Otto had a big change from last show to that show is that he just created a company called Interview Solutions. Is, yeah. is that right, Bjorn? It is right. <laughs> it is right. Is it a surprise for you? <laughs> it's not a surprise because I remember having that discussion with you where you said that um, there is matter to tell a much better story in the water industry. There's matter to yeah. do much better marketing in the water industry and it sounded to me like you had several ideas to do that so i'm glad that uh, you 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 crossed the you you crossed the river but uh I yeah did. swiftly can, can you tell us what uh, what your company is all about well in, in principle just in one sentence we are helping the technology companies out of our water industry to reach their goal with marketing. That, that's all we do. This is the final goal. This is somehow the pitch. Because what I have realized over the last 15, 20, no, not 20, but 12 to 15 years in our industry is that either you are working with agencies, marketing agents, which have no clue about the technology we are talking about, like ZLD or forward osmosis or something else. Or on the other hand, that marketing in the company is totally under undervalued right that that someone is someone is taking the job because of okay someone has to do this right and he's not really taking care about marketing and he has no clues and i found myself in the middle you said this very very right some months ago you are a zebra <laughs> right because you understand the technology and you understand a little bit the marketing so when i was thinking okay bringing both together that's why I formed the company. And so I'm helping with my team, which are all some are from the water industry. And we all understand what a UF is, what a, you know, a ZLD plan is. And we also know what social selling means, what a newsletter means, what really makes an impact on the market. We want to tell stories. And that is the idea. And that's what I, why I formed a little bit the company. So How I, does it sound to you? First, good. Honestly, <laughs> then I, I'd like you to, to give a bit more, more context because I don't want that to sound like an advertising first because I have no stakes in your company. Second, because I insisted Bjorn didn't want to put that on the agenda. And I said, no, come on. If you have a news section and we have to, to say what's new in that industry in the past month, that is something new to me in the, in the industry in the past month. Third, subscribe to the newsletter. I, I, I did it and, um, and really it's a pleasure to, to read uh, every week as Excellent. much as that guy has, has no arguments when he's arguing against me, he, he's, <laughs> he's writing quite, quite well. So it's, it's a cool copy to, to read every week. And, and, and fourth, and I would say last and not least, I mean, tomorrow is going to be my episode 45 of the podcast. And I think uh, in 95% in of the interviews I got at some point, we were saying, come on, we suck at marketing in this industry. Yeah. So yeah. The problem is, it's not 
being bad for the sake of being bad and that's cool and, and, and let's let's live with it. It's it has an impact. When we are not telling the right stories, well, we don't attract the right talents, the right financing, and 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 the right um bold uh, eyeballs on, on our sector. And if and if we don't face it and if we don't do anything about it, then it's never going to be better. And it's not like we would be in a world where water is a problem which is solved at all. I mean we know the numbers, we know the billions of people that, that don't have access to, to, to water, that, that don't have access to sanitation. We, we know the people which are dying of waterborne diseases. And come on, guys, we're in 2021. How is that even possible? So, and that's going to be the final word. And I'm going to give it to you, Bjorn, because I think that's also something I, I love about your uh, entrepreneurship uh, new venture is that it has a purpose. Yeah, definitely. I mean, one, one, one thing I really realized, and we talked about this a couple of times, is that I can't believe that still in 2021, children die because of the fact that they don't have access to clean water or to sanitation. And that's why I said, okay, the clear purpose of this company is that at least 10% of the profit of this company is going to a charity project for the water, for a kind of water project or sanitation project to help that less children will die due to the net less access to sanitation or water. I can't, I still can't believe that. And I want to, you know, I want to encourage, right? So for, for the others, either you do it by yourself or just let's say if we are working together, even if you are giving in a job to me, you will support this idea that we have less children die in the world because of no access to clean water. And then if you think that, uh, yeah, who are we to do that? I mean, it's the human bird metaphor. Everybody's doing its part. If everybody does its part, we're going to make it together as an industry. Yes. And now with that philosophic thought, we're over time. So let me bring Krista swiftly back on stage just to, uh, to have all of the three that were with, with you today. And uh, thanks a lot, Bjorn. Thanks a lot, Krista. It was a pleasure chatting with you. Um, same, same, same for us, right? Thanks a lot, Antoine. Thanks a lot, Christos. Thank a lot, the audience who was watching today. Hope, hopefully you enjoyed a little bit the show. If you have any further questions, you know where to find us. Drop us a mail, drop us a message, whatever, right? We are really looking forward to get connected with you, guys. So see you next month? Most probably. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. That was it for another episode of Time for Wastewater. So what would you like us to debate next? Which water topic shall we put under the spot? Did you like it or did you hate it? And last but not least, is there a matter where you feel your expertise might be a fantastic fit on this stage? Come tell us on LinkedIn. We welcome and praise any feedback. So don't be shy and see you next month.